Hey guys, finally broadcasting the solutions to the final. It'll probably take four parts. We'll begin with the multiple choice. Kelsey's here. Say hi, Kels. No, she didn't say hi, but she's here. It's okay if I put this on the internet? Okay. She just finished her religion final, so she's feeling, feeling good. Okay, so here we go. The molecule with only one double bond. That's going to be, let me get my little pen out. That's going to be D. The molecule with the strongest intermolecular attractions. That's going to be B. The molecule with trigonal pyramidal geometry. That's going to be E. Let's go back and look at Y. D has a structure like that. There is the one double bond for D. Oxygen has two hydrogen bonds, and because there is nobody ionic, it's going to have the strongest intermolecular attractions. And the Lewis structure for pH3 looks like that at the central atom. That's the trigonal pyramidal geometry. Okay, blue and aqueous solution. That's going to be B and very soluble A. The reason B is the answer for four is we have something colored, and we know transition metals are colored. Now, Cu2 plus is going to be blue, but if I had Cu2 plus, that would be pink. Um, and Fe2 plus is going to give us orange. But in general, focus on the fact that all of these are colored. Very soluble in water is A because K plus is an alkali metal and NO3 is a nitrate. Um, if we were making a battery out of this, this would be the component of the salt bridge. Moving on to the next part. The answer to six is going to be C. The answer to seven is A. And the answer to eight is B. Six is C because it makes a solid precipitate from two cation anion combinations. Seven, notice there is no nitrate or an alkali metal there. Seven, combustion reaction because we have plus O2 making CO2 and H2O. There's a little bit of a debate in the field right now whether or not if you just had plus O2, that would be combustion. But um, I like to follow the format that if the word combustion is there, then CO2 and H2O are going to be produced. This is what happens when you breathe. So breathing is a combustion reaction. And redox reaction is B. Um, they should have really called this single replacement redox reaction. Um, the the reason, and uh, what we have is aluminum being oxidized and copper being reduced. The reason I make that distinction is in problem A, we notice um, carbon is actually going from a minus 4 to a plus 4, and oxygen is 0 to a minus 2. So we do have some redox happening in the combustion reaction. So they should have said specifically a single replacement redox reaction. Therefore, these two are kind of interchangeable. And I think that's a poor question because of that. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up for anybody who caught that. Contains two pi bonds. That's going to be A. Has a tetrahedral geometry. That's going to be B. And has the weakest intermolecular interactions. That's going to be B as well. I should have indicated that you can use those twice. The reason why 9 is A is that the Lewis structure ends up looking like this. There is your sigma, and everybody left over is the pi. Tetrahedral geometry, we know that methane looks like this. And weakest intermolecular interactions, well, we know this is going to be nonpolar. And the intermolecular forces are going to be London forces. And that shows up at the bottom of the chart, the sticky chart. So that is the weakest. So it's the strongest, weakest. Going on right now to this one. Side of oxidation in the battery, that's going to be A. Side of reduction in the battery cell, that's going to be B. Chemical that is oxidized in the battery. OK, this is tricky. So it, it can't be anode or cathode because those aren't chemicals. Those are spaces. So the chemical that is oxidized is going to be E and maintains electron flow. That's going to be C. So let's draw a quick picture of a battery right now as a reminder here. we got the salt bridge in the middle. OK, 
Okay, now electrons are going to be going, if they're going in this direction, this is the anode, this is the cathode. All right, and we have our mnemonic, an, ox, red, cat. So the site of oxidation is the anode, and the site of reduction is the cathode. Chemical that is oxidized, we know that the one who's going up is oxidized. That's the reducing agent. So that's where we got the reducing agent from that. And it is the salt bridge that maintains the electron flow. We want a very soluble salt in the salt bridge, most likely containing NO3 or alkalis, such as Na plus or K plus. All right, moving on to number 16. All right, in which of the following species does sulfur have the same oxidation number as it does in sulfuric acid, H2SO4? All right, well, let's go through and get the oxidation number for sulfur in H2SO4. That's 2 plus plus X. This is the S we're looking for. Plus 4 times 2 minus equals 0. That's going to give us an X, which is equal to plus 6. If we do the math. So we can get rid of that because that's minus 2. We're looking for plus 6. We can get rid of that because that's 0. Um, and the answer is going to be E. And let me show you why it's E. So X, there's our S, plus 2 times minus 2, plus 2 times minus 1 for the chloride equals 0. Did I mess up somewhere? No, I didn't. So this is X plus minus 4 minus 2, so we're going to get x minus 6 equals 0. So in this case, x is going to have to be 6, so the answer is E. Um, in which of the following compounds is most ionic? You know that ionics have to start with a metal and a non-metal. So really, A and E are the only choices, even though silicon is a metalloid. And when they say most ionic, you're looking for the ones that are separated the most on the periodic table of elements. So you have calcium 2 plus way over here and chloride minus right there. So it's going to be calcium chloride. Which of the following is a gas at room temperature? So we've got to think about our inter chart. And we know in our inter chart that ionics are solids. We know that um, H bonding are liquids. We know that dip, dip are liquids. And we know that London forces are gases. So we're looking for which of the following is a gas at room temperature. So we're looking for whoever has London interactions. This is a metal, so that's ionic. It's a solid. Okay. There's a non-metal. Looks like that. That's non-polar London. So B is going to be the answer. That's a metal. That's ionic. It can't be that. Metal, ionic. It can't be that. Metal, ionic. It can't be that one. So the answer is CO2. Okay. Um, this problem, we're just going to read the problem to get as much information as we can. So, two solids, the temperature drops. Temperature goes down, delta H is equal negative. If temperature goes up, delta H, I mean, it's negative. If temperature goes up, delta H is negative. All right, so temperature drops, so temperature goes down, delta H is positive. So we can get rid of A, D, D. B and E. So it's either B or C. Let's get some more information here. It says a gas is spontaneously produced. Gas is produced, makes it messy. Delta S is greater than zero. Spontaneous, delta G is less than zero. So we're looking for a positive delta S and a negative delta G. So positive delta S are these two. So it can't be this one. And we're looking for a negative delta G. That works out perfectly. So the answer is C. Do one more and I'm going to move on to another. Actually, I'm going to stop right there and move on to another video. Take care, guys.